Hello and welcome to another Ask Nero to Joy video. I have a familiar face here, Azura. This is our third session, our third filming session. And um, Azura has been dealing with melasma and we've given her home care. I'm going to cleanse off her skin. We're going to have a look under the Maggie lamp and just have a really good look and see how her melasma has changed with the treatments. So I'm using the non-foaming gel cleanser on Azura's skin. And we're just going to cleanse it off there so we can have a really good look under the Maggie lamp at her skin. And I can see just by looking at her skin that her melasma is smaller. It's not as widespread as it was. Uh, she's still got a little dark, it's still, it's small, but it's still dark up here. But I'm noticing it's a lot lighter down here and her forehead looks to be lighter as well to me, but we will uh, we'll have a look under the Maggie lamp. So I've used the non-foaming gel cleanser on Azura's skin and I'm just removing it here. We are going to bring the Maggie lamp over and have a look at her skin and just see how her melasma looks from a month ago when we saw her. Now just from memory and going back, just to recap on what we've done with Azura, is that she had said she lived in Arizona, she had come, um, she had no melasma when she was living there and it wasn't until she came here to Los Angeles when her melasma really came out. She was using a product line that was very successful for her in the beginning, but because it did contain hydroquinone, it's not something that you can use ongoing. Lee, you are supposed to only use hydroquinone for six to eight weeks, then have a break from it for a month, and then you can go back on using it for six to eight weeks, and just you, you can't continue to use it because the cycle within a melanocyte, which is called tyrosinase, if you go beyond that cycle, you will upset that pigment cell and then it will always be upset. So what happens is uh, once, once melasma is affected and it's, it's been upset, then it's just the best you can do is just kind of keep it at bay and maintain by using your daily regimen and using really good sunscreen. Now I've had Azura working on, we started very slow with her first treatment, just introducing, uh, I didn't do any AHAs on her in the beginning. Her melasma is what we call a, uh, a no longer a virgin melasma because she was using hydroquinone. It's really important to work with her skin very gently and just to try to get some movement with that color to get get rid of some of that color from her skin uh, which she had up here now i can see looking at her skin and again i'm going to bring the maggie light over in a moment but you will be able to see that her melasma is not as widespread as it was when i first saw her two months ago it's a lot smaller in size and her second treatment that we did a month ago I'm really seeing that it's it's kicked in and it's working. It's a little bit stronger than what I initially had her on two months ago. We introduced into her second treatment an alpha hydroxy acid, which was a, a complex of alpha hydroxy acids, which is your glycolic, lactic, malic, tartaric, and citrus. Again, they're all different molecular sizes and weights, and they work on different levels in the skin. And that's why we call it a an AHA complex because it has different molecules of different weight and size to work on the different levels in the skin. So we started with, uh, with the segment number two, the filming number two, which was a month ago. I started working with AHAs on her skin and I gave her items to products to use for her home care that were a little bit stronger than what I initially started her out on. So I am seeing her skin is a lot better. Again, I'm not, when I say a lot, I'm talking maybe, maybe she's reaching close to 30% of an improvement. I'm not expecting to get too much more out of her skin at this point. It is a very slow, a very long process working with melasma, but if she's really diligent with it, she should be able to, in six months, it should be maybe 70% better than it is right now. 
So I'm going to bring the Maggie Light over and we're going to have a really good look at her skin under the Maggie Light now that we've cleansed it all off and we can see her skin. What I can see is that I'm noticing that the melasma on this left cheek is breaking up. It's not as widespread it's not as dense as it was when we first started working and the same with her forehead up here as well is that I'm noting it's not as dense you can see it's starting to break up the melasma and it's starting to get a little bit more patchy um, but it is smaller in size to me and I'm seeing that she's starting to get some regular color there in amongst it more than what she had before so we just finished looking through the Maggie lamp at Azura's skin and as I said I'm really noticing that her melasma is breaking up. I'm seeing regular skin color in amongst it. It's not as widespread. It's still quite dark very close up under her eye here. I feel that maybe I'm um, just going to make sure she's you know going over with Zura just to make sure she's putting really the sunscreen she's got to put it so close up by her eye area there uh, she you know it is quite dark very close to the eye area so I'm going to exfoliate her skin this is the papaya enzyme exfoliant it has a little bit of glycolic it also has a little bit of lemon peel powder in it and it's going to be a little stingy on the skin I'm just going to work it into her skin for a minute making sure that you do above the lip area where there is very often that dark color around the mouth and this is an area because in face mapping this is an area that's all our female our sex organs so it's often around a certain time of the month the skin will get dark around the mouth so we're going to use this exfoliator very close to the eye where Azura has it quite dark up there so we're going to go quite close to the eye. I'm not going to leave it on the skin a long time. The eye area, the skin is very sensitive. It's a thinner skin. There is no sebaceous activity around the eye area and on anybody. And it's very close up around that eye area. It is a very thin skin. So we just want to be very gentle there. But just because she has melasma very close in the corners, I just want to make sure that we exfoliate it a little bit. I did mix a little bit of healing gel with this exfoliator. That's an aloe based, 97% aloe based healing gel just to buffer it back a little bit so it wasn't going to be quite as stingy on her. And I'm only going to work it in for a couple of minutes and then remove it with a cooler cloth. So we've gone quite close up here in the corners of the eye and I'm going to be reminding Azura when she leaves to make sure that she's really putting sunblock very close by that eye area. A good physical sunblock. So I'm just cooling down the cloths here, the uh, hand towels, before we take off the exfoliant. And uh, we don't want it to be too hot because the exfoliant has a little bit of glycolic in it and it's a little stingy on the skin so you don't want the the cloth to be too hot. Now this particular item is a retail item and so it's a great product to use at home. It's really nice because it has that buffing effect on the epidermis, it absorbs dead cells and that's great because we want the skin to be really clean to be able to accept the treatment creams that we're going to be putting on the skin hereafter. So I've used the healing gel on Azura's skin. She's a little pink up here around the eye where it's a, a sensitive area. She's a little, the skin is a little pink because I've done an exfoliant quite close to her eyes. I'm now just putting a little bit of the aloe based, 97% aloe based gel on her face. It, uh, it's soothing after the skin is a little bit stingy. And I'm just going to work a little bit of the Q flavonoid into her skin right now. I'm just going to massage it into her skin. Again, we're going to put it quite close up onto her eye area. Okay, so we've worked the flavonoid into her skin a little bit. And now I'm going to do another AHA on her. The AHA is the fruit complex I'm going to use on her. It's a 
a complex of your alpha hydroxy acids, your glycolic, lactic, malic, tartaric and citrus. And I'm going to be using that on her skin now so that it's going to work the many levels within her skin to, uh, to just help again try and lighten her melasma some more, give her that boosting treatment that uh, will help with her home care regimen. So you shake it up. This is our fruit complex number one. Okay, we're just going to put this on her skin, on Azura's skin. And she's going to feel it. it's going to be a little stingy. We're going to catch it up there by the eye area again, making sure that you do that upper lip because it's an area where the skin can get a little bit gray. And Azura has a little bit of the pigment above her eyebrow. Sometimes when people do waxing on their eyebrows, they can get um, melasma where they've had waxing. So it's really important if you do wax your eyebrows, make sure you don't go out and get in the sun. And another, another way that you can get melasma is if you use perfume on your neck and you go in the sun and often you'll see a stain or even guys will have this reddish brownish stain from aftershave lotion and that combined with the sun it burns the skin so I've actually seen a girl that used to put perfume up by her ear and she used to also spray it here and with sun she had a, a, a brown line going down her neck where the perfume perfume would run and then she would go out in the sun and it stained her skin. So she actually had brown line and she also had one on the chest, a little one on her chest as well. So it's really important if you wear perfume to put it under your clothing and don't put it anywhere that's exposed to, gets sun exposure is really important. So she's getting quite red around this eye area, but I want to give it a little bit of a boost. I was feeling quite low sitting on my stool behind Azura and I was wondering why do I feel so low and then I realized it's because she has this fabulous hair that's sticking up it's making me feel really <laughs> really close to her hair but every time I see her I always comment on her gorgeous hair I mean my gosh it's so beautiful so I'm going to remove it I've got some cold cotton right now and we're going to remove the AHA the fruit complex number one which is an AHA complex a variety, a mixture of your glycolic, lactic, malic, tartaric and citrus. Now up around the eye area it's going to be a little sensitive so we don't want to be rubbing there too much because number one I've already done a, uh, an exfoliant up there on that eye area as well and I've also done just now the AHA so we know her skin is obviously a little pink there but it's also going to be a little bit sensitive. So just uh, being aware of that and just patting rather than rubbing would be, uh, is the better thing to do. And remember, we always want to get, uh, we want to get under any fine facial hair, whether when we're cleansing the face, that's why circular motion is really important on the cheeks. So we've, uh, we've removed the AHA, the fruit complex number one, and now I'm putting some healing gel on her skin. Again, a 97% aloe base gel because her skin will be a little bit tingly and a little uncomfortable right now. And Azura's skin seemed a little bit surface dry to me today when she came in. So I'm going to do the pearl silk mask on her. The pearl silk mask has got pearl calcium. It's got the... Um, pearl powder in it and it has a little bit of the, al the arbutin, the alpha arbutin in it which is a derivative from the hydroquinone so it is a safer form of um, a, a, a lightener and I'm going to be mixing that up right now and putting that on her skin. So I'm prepping Azura's skin for the pearl silk mask to go on. I like to, um, I have a little healing gel on her skin. I like to put it on. The tissue sticks to her skin a little bit around. I don't want to get in her hair. So I like to put a tissue, tear it and put it around there. And then I get another two more tissues and I stick it down here. So it can be a little bit runny and I want to make sure it doesn't run down onto the towels because it's hard to get off and we're going to just cover her eye area. And what I'm doing with her eyes is I'm just tearing a cotton pad 
and I'm putting some healing gel on this cotton pad and I'm putting this over her eyes and the reason why I'm tearing it is because her melasma is so close up under her eye I want to make sure that the pearl silk mask when I put it on that I can really get close by her eye area and almost to the point where in some cases which I know in a previous video I didn't even put eye pads on because I wanted to get it so close to the eye but I'm really just going to pop this one very close to the eye and I will maneuver it around once I start to apply the mask just to make sure that we really we get it on those areas there where she has the the stronger melasma now what I've done here is I've mixed the two packets together uh, the basic packet and the pearl silk uh, together and I've mixed them in my little rubber bowl here and you have to mix the powders together dry before you add the water so here is water I'm adding the water is a a little bit cool it's not cold really cold but it's certainly far from warm and I like to uh, to mix it where the water isn't too hot and it's just more comfortable it's it mixes better this way so you have to be quite fast with the mixing um, just to make sure that uh, it doesn't set before you start spreading it on the face I feel like I'm making a cake I know, that's what it says. <laughs> It's so fun. <laughs> okay, so the great thing about the rubber bowls is you can, you can pour it on the skin like this. And sorry, Azura, I should have told you I was applying it so she's aware of what's happening here. It's such a great mask and I love that it doesn't set really tight. So it's, it's not like those really strong masks that just set super tight on the face and uh, that are very claustrophobic. This one, because it's rubbery and it doesn't set really, really tight, it's very comfortable to use and very comfortable on the face as well. So we're putting it very close up under her eye and I just need to make sure we get that area and it is very close to her eye, so you have to be careful. And the same around her lip. Azura has this really pretty lip line, this coloured lip line around her mouth. It's so pretty. It's just a natural lip line. It's so pretty. We're getting very close up by that eye area there again, just making sure we're, we're covering that spot close by her eye, that melasma spot. We're going to make sure we go right across the top of the lip there. We want to cover this area to sort of really brighten up this lip area. Okay, so what we have is we've got the Pearl Silk treatment on Azura's skin. It's a great mask, this one. It, uh, I'm going to put a, a little bit of gauze over the top of it. And what that is going to do is it's going to allow me to press down on the mask on her skin and mold it to the face a little bit. I like to mold it and hold it and it just allows me to do that, the gauze. Sometimes if you don't have gauze, just cutting tissue, just tearing tissue and putting over it works as well and I've done that many times before as well. So we're just going to mold that to her skin. I want to make sure we mold it so that we're really getting under that eye area there, close up under that eye where she has the melasma very close, where um, we're coating that lip area and the forehead where she has the melasma spots as well. Uh, so what this mask is going to do, it's going to brighten her skin. It's going to brighten the melasma up, lighten it. It's got pearl powder, it's got pearl calcium. Pearls are amazing in, um, you know, just in how they work on the skin, in, in how they brighten. They're used in a lot of formulas for brightening and lightening skin, uh, brown spots and melasma. 
and this one also has a little bit of the arbutin in it which also is a brightener on the skin so it's a really great I love this mask it's just it does a great job so it's going to stay on her skin for 15 minutes usually when I have a mask like this on someone's skin I like to do either a hand and arm massage or a foot and lower leg massage it has to stay on the skin for 15 to 20 minutes so we will be back to take it off shortly so we are going to remove the pearl silk mask off Azura's skin and it comes off in one sheet starting from the bottom and we have that, um, I'm just going to take it off here now. And just like this. What's so nice about this mask is that it's really hydrating, so the skin looks really pretty when you take it off. And she has a little bit of mask. That's why it's important to cover the hairline. I'm gonna go back with a cloth and remove the little bits off her face. So we've just got a warm cloth here out of the hot cabbie, and I'm just going to remove it around her eyebrows and just her hairline where a little bit of the mask gets stuck and just a little bit around the mouth and nose. Okay, so we've removed the pearl silk mask off Azura's skin and now I'm going, it's quite late here, I'm going to be putting on the Q flavonoid for her to wear tonight and I'm gonna put a little bit of the retinol over top of it. And that's what she's going to go and wear to bed. And it's, uh, as I said, the Q-flavonoid is all part of the brightening process. So it just really helps to lighten that melasma. And the great thing about the flavonoid, being that it has all these great vitamins in it too, you can really use it close around the eyes. So it's nice when someone has dark circles, it's nice for melasma, it's just nice for really feeding the skin a lot of nutrients. Now this is our vitamin A complex that I'm putting on the skin. This has your A1, your A2, your acetate, your palmitate, your retinoic acid in there, and this is uh, a moisturizer, and of course it has retinol in it, so it's a treatment, a great treatment for the skin. And her last step, I'm going to put a little bit of eye gel and then she's ready to go to bed. So this is the eye gel that I'm putting around her eyes and I'm going to work that in just in circular motions around her eye area and uh, in a complete circle which is how you are supposed to put on your eye product in a complete circle around the eye just like this. And she's all done. So you can really see on Azura's skin how her melasma is breaking up. It's, uh, it's not as dense as it was and it's really, it's lighter. She's a little pink underneath the brown there on the, the high cheeks, but it's really breaking up and that's a really good sign. So we have everything on Azura's skin. We've used the pearl silk mask on her and we've used the flavonoid once we remove the mask, we put the flavonoid on, we put the A night gel on, which is a complex of your vitamin A groupings. And we've put the eye gel around her eyes. She's now ready to go to sleep tonight, leave all of this on her skin. And I'm very happy with the way her melasma's breaking up. She's got a lot more of her normal skin coloring coming in amongst the melasma. Um, her cheek area too, it's not as large the melasma as it was. It's still a little darker up here, it's a little pink underneath her. I've gone a little bit more aggressive on this area up here by the eye today. And, uh, but it's definitely smaller in size, it's not as dark as it was. And I am really seeing a lot of her normal skin colouring coming through the melasma which is a really good sign so I'm looking forward to seeing what her skin looks like again in one month from today we will have her back and be filming her again in one month and uh, 
and see her progress. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Azura, for being here, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.